Hello, my name is Ryan Boyd, and this is the first video in a series of videos that will introduce you to graph databases. We'll assume that you have knowledge of other databases and that you can apply that knowledge to quickly ramp up and become a graphista in no time. This is episode one. In this episode, we'll cover the evolution of databases and explain the problems that graph databases were created to solve. Now, data used to be stored like this, punch tape or punch cards. It's a horrible way to read and understand data. It's impossible to index easily, to cross-reference, to eliminate inconsistencies. But it was the best that we had at the time. The industry evolved. We started storing data in tables and relational databases. Sometimes those tables were human readable. But as soon as you normalize the data to eliminate duplication and inconsistencies, many fields start referencing auto-generated numerical foreign keys. And your data becomes difficult to understand and maintain without complicated join queries. But relational databases came with a key feature, ACID support. This meant that you could trust that once the data was committed, it would be accessible to future queries. It's expensive to find data, though. So we add indexes, which make lookups faster. But if we do a bunch of joins, then we have to perform query time index lookups for each and every join. That's fine if we've normalized into just a handful of tables. But what if it's 20 tables? Well, that's really expensive. And it gets more and more expensive as your data size grows. Now, over the last 10 years, the cloud came along, and things got a bit murkier, a bit less comfortable. Why? Well, there's been a data explosion. Exabytes and exabytes, what do we do with it? We can store it on disk for sure, but how do we make it easy to query? Can our database technologies keep up? Relational databases certainly couldn't handle this volume of data. So innovation took off, and the NoSQL revolution was born. The NoSQL revolution was about making it possible to query more and more data. In order to do this, though, we had to discuss trade-offs. What trade-offs could we make that would make our databases faster? ACID was the first requirement to go. We threw it out the door. After all, with millions and millions of transactions, it's probably OK to lose a couple here and there, right? Developer experience was also critical. How could we make it easier and easier to interact with large volumes of data? We needed to invent, or at least popularize, different interfaces for our developers. The most simplistic of these is a key value interface. You store a value with a corresponding key. Later, you can use that key to access the value. But the value is opaque. It's meaningless to the database. But what if you don't want opaque values? What if you want the database to index the values and make it easy to query based on the content? Well, that's what a document database is all about. It's a key that looks up a document, but you can also look up a document based on its contents, which are indexed for fast retrieval. Now, what if we care less about the discrete bits of data and more about the relationship between our data? One document can reference another, but this isn't very performant or friendly from a developer perspective. Enter graph databases, a relationship-first approach to storing and querying your data. They store data in a much more logical fashion, a way that represents the real world and prioritizes the representation, discoverability, and maintainability of data relationships. But data integrity is important for many developers who care about data relationship. So we brought ACID back to at least one NoSQL database, Neo4j. This allows us to use Neo4j as a transactional data store, storing your most critical business data. Later in this series, we're going to show you how to move your relational database data into a real relational database, a graph database. It's a simple transition that will give you a more intuitive data model, faster queries, and better agility to adapt to changes in the business. Next up, we are going to be talking about graph databases and their use cases. Some developers think that graph databases are only for social networks. They're not. Graph databases are used for dozens of use cases, from fraud detection 
to real-time recommendations, to network and IT operations, and more. Learn more in the next video in this series. Thank you, and have a fantastic day.